Good morning and welcome to Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, Pulaski, Mississippi. We thank God for those of you all that are joining in with us this morning via Facebook Live. We apologize for starting a little late. We had a little technical difficulties with our uh, internet services and a couple other things, but thank God we're still able to be here this morning. Is anybody excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning? Uh, I know we can do just a little bit better than that. We've been on vacation and we been through cities and God allowed us to come out another Sunday morning. So we just want to tell God thank you this morning. We're excited and we're happy to be in the house of the Lord. And this is just another chance to say that this is the day. Ah, that the Lord has made. Somebody said, I will said, I will. I will rejoice and be glad they're in it. Amen. Come on, let's look to God this morning as we enter our, to our worship service and just uh, offer a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, as always, for your love, your grace, and most assuredly, your mercy, God. We thank you again, Lord, for the sun shining down on us this morning, and we just pray now, Lord, that you forgive us all of our sins, Lord. We want to have a right mind, a right heart, a right spirit, a right soul to be able to connect, to praise, and worship you on this morning, God. God, you brought us through another week, Lord, seeing dangers and unseen, God. But God, you allowed your grace and mercy to show up and rest on each and every last one of us, God. But there's somebody out there this morning that's afflicted in their body, afflicted in their mind, that needs a touch from you, God. So as we enter into this worship service, God, we pray that our praise and our worship goes forward so that that person can be touched, Father God. And it might just be you, Lord. It might just be you that needs a word. It might just be me, God. God, we came expecting something from all you to God on today, God, and we just know it. That you're going to give us what we need to run on and see what the end is going to be, God. God, I pray for everyone that is on this program. And I pray and ask that you would allow your Holy Spirit to have his way. Bind in his spirit that is not like you, God. Let your Holy Spirit have his way in this place, God. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, have your way. On the musicians, on the director, Lord, on the usher, Lord, on the lay people, God, on everyone in this place, everyone watching us on social media, God, have your way, Holy Spirit. Because we know when the Holy Spirit is in the place, souls are set free. Souls are, are sanctified and, and salvation is there, God. And we just thank you, Lord. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise as we move forward with our song service.
my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my command. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. <coughs> Write them on the tablets of your heart. Right. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And lean not on your own understanding. Yeah. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I read for you Proverbs, the third chapter, first to seventh verse. May the Lord and the blessed to read the hero of his holy word. Amen. Glad to be in the service one more time. Happy to be here. Happy to see your face this morning. God has been good to us. Let us give him some thanks. Heavenly Father, we call upon your name. We first just thank you, Lord, for being our Father. Lord, we thank you for our life. We thank you for our health. We train, and we thank you, Lord, for our strength. Because it all comes from you. And Lord, help us to obey your word. Yes. Help us, Lord, to keep our trust in you yes. and not in man. Yes. For I know this flesh is weak. Yes. The mind sometimes will control the flesh yes. based on what it's looking at. Yes. But one thing about it, you are solid as a rock. Yeah. You don't bubble. You don't wiggle. Yeah. Your line is never been. Somebody will call you every now and then. Call you with an AT&T or consumer cellular or whomever. And you know what? If your mind is busy, they have to leave you a mess. One thing about Jesus, he's all right. He listens to every one of our calls. Lord, we thank you for Pastor James. We thank you for his family. We thank you for our musicians. Yes, Lord. We thank you for our son of the house, Reverend Nathan. Yes. Lord, you, you brought us. Yes. And you kept us. Yes. yes. And we can't say enough. Yes. But one thing we can say. Yes. When this journey is over. Yes. Lord, we looking to see you one day. Yes. yes. One more river to cross. Yeah. We're going down to that land. Yeah. And we go across over Jordan River. Yeah. Yeah. When we come up on the other side, yeah. it'll be a new day. Yes. Yeah. Lord, lead us. Guide us. Take care of us. Yeah. It is our prayer. Yeah. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. How many of you know God is awesome? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're going to ask the praise team to come up and join me as we uh, sing a little worship song to God. Oh, yes. We want y'all to join in with us and let all your thoughts go and yes. open up your mind to just worship. Yes. Oh, yes. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heal me when I'm broken.
giving God some praise right there. Heals me when I'm broken. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing like a good moment of just worshiping God. Amen. There's nothing like a moment of just going in and worshiping God and just telling him, thank you, he's mighty. Amen. Telling him that he is wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. Our announcements for Sunday morning. Um, as always, we want to continue to keep our sick and shut in and our uh, bereaved families in prayer. Uh, this week, your name may not be on the list, but who knows what tomorrow may hold. So let us always keep our sick and shut in in prayer. We were definitely going to pray for them before we leave on today. Uh, got revival coming up Monday, July 25th through Wednesday, July 27th here at the church at 715 nightly. Uh, we will have Pastor uh, Curtis Laster of Mount Carmel. Um, Missionary Baptist Church will be the evangelist for the three nights. Each member, uh, we're asking that you would uh, give $10 for the revival. Uh, $10 for the revival. Uh, refreshments will be provided nightly by the youth and young adult. Please support this ministry. Um, we're going to have a good time, y'all. We haven't had a revival in a very long time. And I know we have not had made too many announcements about, but the announcements are coming forward now uh, about the revival. The, uh, the 25th through the 27th. Please click your schedule if possible and join with us at least one night if we can make it. Uh, but we will be here and we're looking for God to do some great and some awesome things for us individually. Uh, we know that revival is a time for us to come out and lift up the, the name of Jesus and get a, let's get some energy back from where you've been beat down by life's uh, trials and tribulations. That's what the revival is for. And we uh, thank God for Pastor Curtis and the Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church for coming down uh, to make this uh, blessing for us. So uh, spread the word to everyone that we will be having a revival, uh, our summer revival, uh, July 25th through the 27th. Um, today, following worship service, uh, we will have uh, youth and young adult, we have a little ice cream social. We will have some ice cream in the back if you would like some. Please uh, join in. And it's just, it's more so about the fellowship, y'all. It's about the fellowship as we continue to return to church, uh, the church house. Uh, today at 2.30, we will be at St. John Missionary Baptist Church, pastored by um, Anthony Robinson for his 20th year uh, pastoral anniversary. So we'll be going down there to celebrate with them. Those of you all that would like to come, that's where we will be at 2.30 on today. Please come down and celebrate with us. Uh, do we have any July birthdays in the house this morning? Any July birthdays? Oh, we got one in, the, one, in the, one in the house. It's all two. We got two. Okay, amen. We thank God for y'all. Uh, happy birthday to you all, and we pray and ask that you all have, uh, or we pray that you all have had a uh, blessed how many ever years you may be. Drew, we know you're about what? 40. 40. 64. Amen. Thank God for you. You can get around. You don't look, look, look a day over 64. Amen. And thank God for uh, Davon, young man, working in the house of the Lord, doing whatever he's asked anytime you ask him to do something. I get nothing but a yes, sir, and a smile. And we just thank God for him and his spirit and his humility, his humility that he has at such a young age. We just pray that God will continue to rest upon his life. And we again, we thank God for all of those that had birthday in the month of July. Mama Ryan says, happy uh, birthday to you. Um, moving on, well, thank you, uh, church family, for the uh, token of love. Also, all the support throughout the years and it is much appreciated. Uh, love, Abriana. Uh, she was just saying thank you. Uh, we appreciate you as well. Uh, she graduated, thank God. Amen. 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 She graduated from Alcorn State University uh, down in Norman, Mississippi. We know where it is. Uh, thank God for uh, you and what you're doing and all your endeavors. And to all those that uh, graduated, uh, we just pray that God will continue to shine upon your life and continue to move forward. Um, I don't have any more announcements at this time now. We will have one more song, and then we will move forward with our service for today. We thank God again for all of you all that are here. Uh, as we're going forward, as our music is getting ready, I will say this is where the announcements, uh, those that are giving your offering, don't forget, it's Givelify. You can come to the church or get in touch with one, or mail it in, or just get in touch with one of the deacons, and we will be sure 
uh, to get it to you. We want to say thank you. I uh, thank God for, you know, a lot of families went on vacation this past, in the last couple of weeks, that you all had traveling grace and you made it back safely. We just thank God for it. Uh, it's a blessing. It's good for family to always get together. Amen. And then last but not least, let us be mindful that uh, COVID seems to be ramping back up just a little bit. Uh, so you all be careful with it. Uh, and make sure you wear your mask, wash your hands, and do all that you got to do uh, to stay COVID free. But if by chance that you uh, get the virus, make sure that you keep praying and asking the Lord to cover you and keep you. Amen. Amen. This time we have our music.
praise him for he is worthy to be praised holy god we thank you for this appointed hour thank you for another opportunity to be able to hear your word as i come before you now god i pray that you would move me out of the way and speak through me god god i pray now that you would give my body strength god to be able to preach your word praying for preaching power god in this place on this morning god god i pray that there's some sinner man a sinner girl that's out there lord that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins, God. A word would go forth that would help them, that would help them to see that you are the way, the truth, and the life. God, we need you right now. Here it is, 2022, and any and everything is going on. You've seen this before, God, and you healed it. You delivered us. I stand right here boldly and say, we need you again, God. We need you again, God. Mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you as always again this morning. If you would turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. As you find it, uh, I want to say that the Spirit is in line this morning because it's about worship. The last time we were here, God started doing some things and showed me that it's about our worship. It's about our worship. The Scripture tells us to let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. That's what it says. That's everything. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. But there's something about once you get past your praise. Uh, and, and, and we want to talk a little bit more today about worship. Matthew 14, verse 33 says, Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him saying of a truth thou art the son of God as you be seated this morning it's just real simple just simply say worship him worship him somewhere over in John I believe it says they that uh, seek him must worship him must uh, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and as I began to think about this thing, it's been weighing on my spirit and I've been dealing with it ever since our last meeting Sunday. It's been God asking me, where is your worship? Where is your worship? I brought you through a pandemic. I brought you through sickness. I brought you through financial problems. I brought you through uh, problems going on in your family, problems going on within your body internally, problems going on with your mind. I brought you through what you've watched on TV. I've, I've, I brought you through what you've seen on your social media feeds. I brought you through all of this. Where is your worship? Are you, are you just simply at a point where you just want to praise me, but you don't want to worship me? Right. To understand the, to the difference in the two is, is to understand that you've built a relationship with Jesus the Christ. <laughs> One thing that I began to understand, I began to see about worshiping God is in our worshiping Jesus from, the, from Genesis all the way through Revelation, every time he performed a miracle, be it he was parting the Red Sea or giving sight to the blind, the people always came together to worship him. All right. All right. Meaning that they had to go through some things in order to build their relationship with Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. With God, they had to go through some stuff to really realize who he is and how powerful he is for us. Here we are in 2022 and none of us want to go through anything. We want to be able to come to work, get our check, and not even do any work. 
We want to be able to come out to the house of the Lord and see the lights on, or see our new chairs, or see the stuff, or the programs go on, and don't want to do any work behind the scenes to okay. make it what God really would have it to be. We went through a Bible class lesson and we talked about the fact that at the end of the day when it's all said and done, no matter what the program is, no matter what's going on in the house of the Lord, at the end of the day, the goal ought to be to lift up Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. That is our everyday goal. We ought to be trying to figure out how can I tell God thank you for the breath in my body. Yeah. How can I tell God thank you for just simply thinking about me this morning and reaching down and touching me and, and closing me in my right mind? Yeah. I, I swear the older that I get, the more I understand that thing of being closed in your right mind because when life's trials and tribulations hit you sometimes, it seems as if you could lose your mind. And here we are, we talk about mental health. I believe we just came out of Mental Health Month. Uh, I mean, it was a couple of months ago, but at the end of the day, we're talking about mental health, but a lot of our mental health problems simply come from the fact that we aren't leaning and trusting and depending on Jesus Christ. When we start going through our trials and our tribulations, we start leaning and depending on people. We start leaning and depending on our jobs. We start leaning and depending on substances to try to get us through. But we know that the answer at the end of the day is our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let's look at the text this morning. We'll start around the 28th verse. It says, and Peter said unto him, Lord, if it's you over there, uh, bid me to come unto the water. Verse 29 says, and he said, come, and he said, come, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are in 2022, and God has blessed us down through the years, and we are walking on water. We're trying to get to Jesus. We're praising him Sunday after Sunday, and Monday after Monday, and week after week, and month after month, year after year. We're praising him under our own circumstances. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is when things are good, we're lifting up our hands and saying, thank you, Jesus. But when things get down and the, and the ship begins to rock a little bit or the waters begin to get a little troubled, we start looking in other directions saying, woe is me. I need to figure out a way to get out of this. I need to start doing this and I need to start doing that. But in all in all, if you take your points this morning, my first point to you this morning is when you start going through your trials and tribulations that the storms of life begin to rage in your life, uh, the first thing that you need to do is work on your relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. When we're working on our relationship with the Lord, we begin to realize that we have to go back to the moment that we always talk about, and that is simply looking in the mirror and looking at that man or that woman and really being honest with ourselves, saying, I'm falling short in this area I need to work on. We got to deal with the fact that when we're starting to get into the relationship with God, that everything can seem like, all right, like it's all right, but the enemy is there to try to discourage us. It may come in the form of a financial hardship. It may come in the form of sickness. It may come in the form of mental problems, emotional problems, family problems. It may come in the form of problems on the job. It may come in the form of problems in your school life. But in some kind of way, the enemy is going to try to stick his head up and discourage you and keep you from doing what God has called you to do. But I'm here this morning to encourage you and to push you just a little bit farther and say, hold on just a little bit longer. Because if you keep your hand in God's hand, Romans 8 and 28, it says, all things will work for your good. We look at the text this morning. We see that Peter got a chance to walk out on water. And he was walking towards Jesus. And then he saw the wind boisterous. Let's look back at that. Now, and I want you to ask yourself, when was the last time you saw the wind blow? It says in the text, he saw the wind boisterous and he got scared. I want to tell somebody this morning that you can't see the wind blow, but you see the effects of the wind blowing. And what it is, is when you're in your life and the wind begins to blow in your life and you're seeing the effects, be it your finances are low, your body is sick, your mind is going through this, you're dealing with depression, you're dealing with anxiety problems, you're dealing with all of this stuff, it's all right to get afraid. Mm -hmm. Look right here, Peter was right in front of Jesus. Yes. He was right in front of Jesus and got afraid. He knew who Jesus was and got afraid. Just like you, you know who Jesus is and you, it's all right for you to get afraid. <laughs> and 
it even goes on to say, and he began to sink. He began to sink. You're going to sink sometimes in life. Life is going to throw some situations at you and you're going to begin to sink. You're going to get scared. But let's do like Peter did right here. The first thing he said, he didn't call on the people that he could actually uh, get closer to. He didn't go back to the boat. He didn't go back to his friends. Those that he was on the boat, he didn't go back to them. The very first thing he did, he said, Lord, Save me. Amen. He said, Lord, save me. Yes. At this point in the journey, understand that Peter was already saved. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, save me. Uh -huh. So point to you. Uh, another point for you this morning. Even though you're already saved, uh -huh. you still need to call on him. Right. Right. You still need to call on him. Yes, he said, Lord, save me. Uh -huh. And here's the shouting moment. In verse 31, it says, and immediately, right. immediately, mm. oh, yeah. and not next week, mm. not six months down the line, yes. not a year from now, but immediately, mm -hmm. yes. Jesus stretched forth his hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not only did he stretch forth his hand, he called him. Mm. And he said unto him, O thou of little faith, mm. why are you doubting me? Why are you doubting me? I brought you through. I brought you all the way out here. I got you in the middle of the water. Let me help somebody who's going through. I, 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 I let you go through college. I got you in your career field. I got you on a job. If I brought you this far, let me help somebody else. Yeah, I allowed sickness to come up on you. But I'm still here. If I brought you this far, yeah. let me help somebody else out. You've been dealing with some stuff internally. Yeah. And every day that you wake up, you cry tears. Yeah. You go through your depression moments. You deal with anxiety. You deal with this. You deal with that. You're dealing with life. I brought you this far. Yeah. I still got breath in your body. Yeah. You're still able to focus in your mind. You're still able to move your limbs. I brought you this far. If I brought you this far, yeah. what will make you think I'm going to leave? Yeah. Why are you doubting me? Yeah. Why are you doubting me? Yeah. Scripture tells us that the enemy is seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. And his, his bark is way more bigger than his bite. It says he goes as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. He's just making a lot of noise. That's all he's doing. And so what we got to remember when we get in these moments when we're scared and we start to doubt God, it's just the enemy trying to discourage us. Yeah. When you're out in the desert for a long time, no water, you begin to see things, they call them mirages. Begin to imagine things when life gets dry. Mm -hmm. Begin to make up stuff in your head. Because yes, yes. things ain't where they need to be. You don't have the nourishment that you need. Mm -hmm. In a spiritual context, when you find yourself in these moments in life where mirages are showing up, mm -hmm. it's important for us to keep in mind that they're just false evidences that are appearing real. Mm -hmm. yes. A false evidence that appears real can also be converted and said that that is fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're scared to go further. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, I see you. Let, let me back up and let me say something here. All of us, because we're still breathing, mm -hmm. God's got something else for us. All right. yes. 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 And where it's time for us to take the next step, mm -hmm. we're holding on to what's coming. Mm -hmm. Because it's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. This is the way it's, this is the way I thought it was going to go. This is the way I planned it to go. But God is trying to take us higher. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you two are almost 200. Mm -hmm. If you're breathing, 
God is trying to do something with you. Amen. And what worked yesterday? Mm -hmm. All right. What worked yesterday? Mm -hmm. It's coming to an end. Yeah. It's time to do something new. Yes. It's time to venture out mm -hmm. and do something that you thought about doing on yesterday, mm -hmm. but you didn't have enough strength to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and it may just mean that you got to lead the folks on the boat. It may just mean that you got to leave some family, you got to leave some friends. It may just mean that you have to be out there by yourself yeah. in order to really see who God really is. All right. Think about this. As Peter got out in the middle of the water, Jesus began, began to get bigger as, he, as your perception gets closer to something. Mm -hmm. When he reached out and he called him. There was nobody else that could have done it. Mm -hmm. Only God. But what if Peter had stayed on the boat? Mm -hmm. What if he had stayed on the boat? Mm -hmm. My challenge to you this morning is, what if you stayed on the boat? What if you never get off the boat? Mm -hmm. What if you never try him? What if you never ever exercise the faith that you say you believe in Jesus the Christ? Mm -hmm. What if you just get comfortable with sitting on the boat mm -hmm. and not allowing yourself to really have a relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus? Mm -hmm. You've seen what he's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's healed your body. He's provided for you when, when there was no money. He sent a check. He sent a friend to just give you something. He, he, when you were dealing with stuff on the inside, he sent a word of encouragement through somebody in some type of form, way or fashion. He's taken care of you since before you knew who you were. And here you are now. Biggest moment, critical moment. And all you got to do is take a step. All right. Verse 32 says, And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Mm -hmm. The way I saw that when I read it this time was simply the fact that after he got himself wrapped up, tied up, wow. tangled up in oh, Jesus, my. the wind ceased. Mm -hmm. I, I know it somewhere it says uh, that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. He got all power in his hands. Yes. So when you find yourself wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up inside of him, you find yourself having peace in the midst of the storm. But the God that you serve is so powerful that he will calm the storm. Verse 33 says, Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him. They weren't the ones out there walking. Peter was the one that was walking on water. But these men that were on the boat, they saw. They saw what Jesus did. They saw the fact that that their friend, their friend walked on water. He walked on water. Let's, let's back up and let's put ourselves in that mode. I'm walking on water. The God that I serve allowed me to walk on water. Because I had faith in him. Mm -hmm. And when I began to lose faith, mm -hmm. he still caught me. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. let, let me help somebody out this morning. You tried God. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like it ain't working. Mm -hmm. You cried out and said, Lord, save me. Yeah. He came and did it. And he's, he's asking you, where is your faith? Mm -hmm. 
But after he asks you, where is your faith? It's something that you got to do. You got to continue to work on your relationship and worship him. I, I didn't come to, to, to have everybody say, uh, I'll run around the church or, 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 or scream and yell this morning. I came because I wanted everybody to think about where is your worship. Where is your worship this morning? We come out on second and fourth Sunday to worship service. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. We come to show an outward appearance to all of our fellow brothers and sisters, be it Facebook or face to face. We come out to simply say that I love Jesus. We come out to simply tell God that I'm going to worship you in spite of what all the hell that I went through this week. In spite of how my body feels on this morning, I'm still going to worship you. I, yeah, I praised you all week long. I told you thank you for getting me to to and from work and allowing my children and my family and everybody to be all right. I praised you because of that. But because on Sunday morning, Somewhere in the text it says he got up Amen. with all power in his hands. And we as the Baptist denomination, we celebrate Sunday morning with worship service. Yes. Yes. Not just praise service, but worship service. Yes. I come to church on Sunday morning because I want to have a date with the Lord. Yes. Worship service. Yes. But, but this is what I began to figure out about worship. To worship him not just on Sunday morning. Right. I, I have to start worshiping him uh, even on Sunday evening, on Monday morning, on yeah. Wednesday and Thursday, and Friday and Saturday. Yeah. I had to start worshiping him because my praise was just opening the door. Yeah. My praise was just opening the door and getting his attention. Yeah. But it took me to still be able to pick my Bible up on Monday morning and on Tuesday and look for the word that I need because when I really feel like cussing and fussing, the, the Holy Spirit works there and simply tells me, no, you ain't got to cuss and fuss. You go in there and you tell the people that thou be faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. You go in there and you tell the people that they are conquerors. But not only are they conquerors, they are more than conquerors. You go in there and you tell the people that you are victorious, not through you, not through family, not through friends, but through Jesus Christ. I had to find out that I am mighty, I am strong. I had to find out that even though the enemy comes up against me, there is nothing that he can do against me. Because the God that I serve. Sits high and looks low. Yeah. He told me that he's sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for me because my foolish, stupid self and my human self yeah. right, right. says stuff and does stuff that I ain't supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But because of them twins. Mm -hmm. Because of them twins, grace and mercy. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care how much you lie on me. I don't care what you uh, uh, do to me. Those twins called grace and mercy. They allow me to put a smile on my face, even when I should be broke, busted, disgusted, beat down, laid down, crying and wallowing in my mud. Those twins called grace and mercy allow me to put a smile on my face. They allow me to simply say, I got joy in spite of all that I'm going through. Even though I lost my friends and my family. Even though I'm going through this on the job. Even though I deal with this in myself internally. Even though I deal with this in my family. I'm still going to have joy. I'm not going to walk around here with my head down. I'm not walking around here with a frown on my face. Simply because the God that I serve. Told me that in spite of the fact that you did wrong, in spite of the fact that you allowed this to happen, in spite of all of this, mm -hmm. I still love you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still love you. Yeah. And even in the midst of everything that is going on in this world, y'all, yeah. we got to understand this. I still got to worship you. Right. I still got to worship you. Yeah. I, I, yes, I can praise you. 
And the songwriter says, praise is what I do. Yes, that is what I do. Thank you, God, you allow me to make it through another day. Hallelujah, I, I praise you all the day long. But when the going gets tough, and it gets all, all rough, and it seems like that the troubles or the cares of life are about to overtake me. I can't call on my wife. I can't call on my children. I can't call on the deacons. I can't call on the mothers. I got to call on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Encourage the young people. Call on him. Yeah. Call on him. Yeah. Let me help you understand something. Call on him early. I know your friends are doing their thing and they living this life the best way that they know how to live and they doing their own way of living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's only one thing, only one person that's going to help you, that's going to lead and direct you in the way that you need to go. And I know that, that the money looks good. I know that the flash and the glitz and the glory look good. Mm -hmm. But when it's all said and done, young people, yes, Lord. you can't take your money to heaven. Hey. Can't take these clothes to heaven. Right. Can't right. take these cars, right. these houses, right. and all the other stuff that seems like I got to have it. Yeah. Right. The older I get, the more I understand the simple fact that all I need yeah. is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Because this life is going to come to an end one day. Yeah. The next life is eternity. Yeah. Yeah. Ongoing. Infinity. Yeah. Ain't no dying and coming back to somebody else. All right. All right. It would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice to get out of here and then come back to somebody else and do this thing called life again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you only get one life and yeah. I would rather, I would rather live this life for Christ. Yeah. I would rather, rather live this life yeah. in Christ yeah. and die and find out that there is a heaven. Yeah. Then to find out that there's a hell and I done busted wide open because I've been trying to chase the bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I understand that uh, for, for some of the older folks, chasing the bag and trying to get the money, mm -hmm. that, that you want to have more money than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Trying to chase this bag. That's all they talk about at work. I, I want this bag. I'm trying to get the bag. You got the bag? I, I, you know what? I do got the bag. He holds it all in his hand. If I, oh, thank you, Lord. If I want to get the bag, maybe I ought to get the one that's holding the bag. Maybe I ought to get him. I got a few more minutes here. That's only 1025. Maybe I ought to get him. If I get the one that's holding the bag, that divvies out what's going on, just maybe. Just maybe. It make some work out for me if I get a hold of him. Mm -hmm. Not not what's in the bag, but maybe if I get the one that hole in the bag. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one that allows it to come into my life. So yes. if I get a hold of him and he, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, there it is. Yeah. If he knows my yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. We're running back into this, the message from, from the last Sunday. If he knows my name. He's got to know my name in order to give me what I what he has for me. He has the blessings for us. But if he don't if he don't know my name, I'm not ever saying thank you Jesus or hallelujah. If I'm not even trying to worship and have a relationship with him, then why in the world would he give me that blessing? I'm not ready for it. I'm not mature enough for it. And it doesn't matter what age you are. From two to two hundred, you got to mature with this thing. You got to have a strong relationship with the Lord. Come here, the high water. No matter what folks say, no matter what folks do, live the life that God has called you to live. And in living that life, you've got to worship Him. It's a must that we worship Him. Scripture tells us. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. As we move forward in 2022, get ready to go out of this year. Worship will be a theme of emphasis at Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. It is important that we have a relationship with the Lord. Because every day, people are getting out of here. Every day, people are dealing with life's trials and tribulations. 
The answer is in the word. Call on the Lord and he'll save you. When we, when, we, when we think about our relationship with the Lord, are you satisfied? If you're satisfied, I'm going to ask you to get unsatisfied and ask God to take you to a higher height, to take you to deeper levels. But understand when you ask him to do that, he's going to send you through a test and a trial. We'll send you through a test and a trial. And he already knows that you're victorious. But do you believe that you're victorious? Yeah, we got this. All we got to do is worship him. Worship will begin to unlock some things. Let's look at the reality of what Jesus just did right here. We may be small in number. But we did. We did. And, 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 and it's just the beginning. God is showing me some things around here. He's putting some people in place. Some of us have been doing this for a long time. And now it's time to do something different. And we don't want to let go. But God is going to move us there. Some of us have been behind the scenes for a long time. You've been training and didn't know you was training. But now it's time for you to step forward. And the reason why, the reason why certain things ain't going on is because we have gotten complacent where we at. And it's time for us to get out of the way for the next generation to come through. And, 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 and understand this. It don't just necessarily mean get out the way, sit down and do nothing. But it may be your season of giving instruction. Just tell somebody and they'll get it done. We got a few young folks around here that got way more energy than we do. And they just need somebody to give them an encouraging word. Pat them on the shoulder and say, I got you, brother. I got you, sister. If you want to do this, I'll support you. And I'm here with you. I'll do whatever it is that you need me to do. We want some more younger folks to come in here. The only way we're going to be able to do that is if we're giving instruction. And I know it's not easy. We deal with it every day. And we keep saying this, and I'm guilty of it myself. These young folks' mentality, their mind is different when it comes to work and getting things done. All right, well, let's use what we got. What is your opinion? What is your thoughts? How can we incorporate uh, an older season with a new season? How, how can we get the church to where it needs to be so that on Sunday morning the seats are filled up when it, on revival the seats are filled up when things are needed we can just pick up the phone and call people what do we need to do? I know that the old devotional hymn don't do it for you so what do we need to do? and, and when we get ready to worship him when we get ready to do these things who's going to do it? time to worship him. When we begin to worship him, he's going to open up other doors, which will allow for newness to come through. New faces. New gifts. People that we didn't expect to do things, they're going to start doing things. I just believe it. Some things that we want to do around here. God is going to send the people. I can't be the only one to believe this. I can't be the only one. I, I just believe there's a few people that have been living around here long enough. And they want to see the church go forward.
that actually want to see the church on a larger scale than what it really is. But holding on to the same values and principles of the world. I see it. And I believe that God is going to do it. Standing all over the sanctuary. Somebody dealing with work issues. Somebody just dealing with stuff, God. We know that you're able, Lord, to do whatever needs to be done. And we believe, Lord, that you're going to save us. And it begins with our worship, God. For you seek it such that would worship spirit and in truth God and we're diligently seeking you God in our situations God as we prepare now to partake in one of the great ordinances of the church remembering the fact that you hung on an old rugged cross and you died for us we say thank you first, God. And after we say thank you, God, we ask that you would forgive all of us, Lord, for our sins. Lord, we don't want to eat or drink damnation unto our souls, God. Please forgive us, Lord, where we uh, failed to do your will, where we did something out of your will, God. Just forgive us, God, and give us strength, Lord, to be able to not do those things, Lord, ever again. Thank you. 
God, we thank you for our church ministry. Thank you for touching lives, God. God, some people been dealing with sickness. Some people been dealing with sickness, God. I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, we have the right to eat together and drink together. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. thank God for each and every one of you that tuned in with us via Facebook, social media. Pray and ask that you would just have a blessed and a wonderful week. Uh, we pray that something has been said that we're done, are done that will help encourage you to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. If there's anyone that is out there in social media land that doesn't know Jesus in the part of their sin and you would like to unite with Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, just send us a message and we will surely get back out to you. We thank God for you, and I'm releasing those that are on Facebook and social media now. In the name of Jesus, God be with you, and peace be upon you. you